Hello and welcome to Joy in Our Town. I am so delighted that you've chosen to come back and join us again. Or maybe this is your very first time to catch this program. And so let me tell you what we're about. I'm so grateful that TBN is concerned about the practical issues of people that live in Central Florida. So Joy in Our Town gives us an opportunity to showcase an individual, an organization, a ministry, a service uh, agency that is there to serve you. And the reason that they're there gives us reason to have joy in our town. And so I'm delighted that you joined us today. And I want you to just sit back and relax for the next 28 minutes as we spend some time talking about something that was very important in Scripture. The Bible talks about uh, education. And there's a verse that goes like this. Study to show yourself approved, a workman that needeth not to be ashamed, rightly dividing the word of truth. We, we are people that are called in our service of Jesus to not just be uh, hearers, but to be doers. But we want oftentimes people to do it for us. And so our guest today is going to give us some joy and some reasons to know why that God can help us to use every kind of, of gifting and talent that you've been born with in our lives. So I want you to join me and let's welcome Sharice Jones. Welcome, Sharice. Thank you, George. I'm delighted that you're <laughs> with us here. I will tell everybody already if they don't, uh, they'll find out you and I have been friends before. Yes. Uh, I know Sharice because she is the program operations and marketing director for Asbury Theological Seminary. Um, here in the Faith Works and Economics, That's which right. is, we'll be talking about that a little bit later. Um, Sharice, you hold a bachelor and a master's degree in business as well as in divinity. Oh, wow. So, uh, I, you know, that's, that's pretty phenomenal. <laughs> I, I admire you. Uh, before we go into the subject matter, how did you get interested in business? Oh, wow. This is an interesting story. As a child, I grew up watching my parents. And I had a mother who started, helped to start a nonprofit agency to help the elderly as well as to serve the um, underserved or the marginalized in our community. And my father owned a record store. And so I saw both my mom and my dad operating these businesses in our community with um, the intent of helping and serving people. And so watching that as a child and then wanting to make a difference for the world. I was that world changer. Okay. You know, I would look at television and, and get really sad about the things that I was seeing. So I knew that when I grew up, I wanted to make a difference. And so seeing uh, my father and my mother in the world of nonprofit and profit businesses, and with that desire to change the world, that's what kind of led me into the to business, working for Ford Motor Company out of college. And um, God strangely called me into something called ministry, yeah. which I never anticipated in my wildest dreams. Yeah. And so, but do you see a disconnect between business and ministry or have you watched God show you how to blend that together? I've watched God show me how to blend that together. When I was first called to ministry, I actually was operating a small nonprofit for girls, working with them on goal setting, the direction they wanted to head in as far as career and education. And then when I gave my life to Christ and I said, Lord, use me, what do you want me to do? And he called me to preach. And I left that nonprofit, it kind of dwindled aside. I started working for a public school system in Polk County. And um, it wasn't until my seminary experience at Asbury Theological through the Faith, Work, and Economics office that there is a marriage that happens that God wants to use us everywhere from the pulpit to the marketplace. Yeah. There's a Hebrew word that's uh, <laughs> avadah. And avadah uh, in its definition in English is our work is our worship and our worship is our work. Absolutely. And so we need to realize God didn't make us yes. to be holy on Sunday and the rest of the week just to be secular. Right. We are holy all the time. So business and faith are colliding in the midst of it. Absolutely. You, um, because you're in education mm -hmm. the, and we live in a world that is struggling in poverty. I, I want to get into some issues that I think we, that are really important issues. Sure. How does poverty affect 
education in our culture today? Poverty has a strong and profound impact on education. When we have students who are living in poverty, those students, for instance, who are entering into kindergarten are less likely to be equipped and prepared in comparison to their um, peers who are come from more privileged families. When students are living in poverty, they are less likely to graduate high school and go on to college. When students are living in poverty, then they are less engaged um, in after school activities, enrichment activities. And so when we talk about poverty, we must talk about education policy, we must talk about how schools are funded, and even our classroom instruction, all of those factors. But, but what I really want to say here is that that education is the foundation for our children. It is those building blocks that they need to create opportunities for themselves in their lives so that they can flourish and succeed. So when poverty becomes a barrier, when children and families feel hopeless, like there's no way out of my circumstance, this has a devastating effect on the mind of a child in the classroom because why even try if I'm never gonna get out of this situation that I'm in? So that becomes a distraction. And when we think in terms of students not receiving a quality education and being properly equipped for employment, for career and for the workforce, Force, this has a detrimental effect on our local economy because businesses and companies can't find the skilled employees that they need. And so the two are connected. So we must begin to address um, poverty in our schools. And so it, but it goes even deeper into yes. our communities. Yes, so absolutely. So talk, uh, what are some of the, um, the, the results of this that are happening with children now as a result that are not. Because again, don't forget, we're talking about business and work and, and, and ministry and life, and all of this is connected. Sure. So if, if poverty is doing that, it's leaving our communities what? It's leaving them void of all of the talent and brilliance that's captured in the hearts and in those little bodies of those elementary kids. Because if we cannot harness those gifts, if we can't harness those skill sets so that they can um, pour back into our communities in positive ways, into our local economies, into giving back to help the communities flourish, then we are at um, a real detriment in where we're heading as a society and as a culture in this next generation that's coming up. So um, these things we have to begin to, it, remember the saying, it takes a village to raise a child? That, that saying is still very true today. It takes a community, a faith community. It takes those organizational partners. It takes the business community to come alongside these young minds and see how we can develop them and to speak into their lives because when and they feel hopeless and they feel like they don't have a chance it's us who should step up to the plate and say yes you can do it well help us what can we do as a community to uh, to be a part of a proactive response to this what would you recommend our our viewers to to say they could do to help change this? I think a lot of times because when we talk about and hear the issue of poverty, it's so big, right? How can any one person tackle it? So I say start small. If you have just a little bit of time, and when I say a little bit, maybe 30 minutes, an hour, that you can go to your local community and go into a school and volunteer with that school to read to a child, to mentor a child, to come alongside a child, those positive role models are what children often need in the school. So volunteering, um, being a mentor, being a coach. If you are a business person, then lend your, your, your business knowledge and your um, professional experience to these young minds that are coming through middle school and high school that have aspirations to become teachers or doctors or lawyers or entrepreneurs themselves. So come in and share what you've learned through your journey. What does it take to become a business person or an entrepreneur? What does it take to become a doctor. So lending that to our students and with our other community organizations and partners where we find students that are lacking um, just the basic necessities and resources. George, let me tell you, there are students that come to school and they are in survival mode. They don't have the basic necessities. They're worried about where their next meal is going to come from. They're worried about where am I going to live because um, the job market is unstable. And so parents may have to pick up because they can't make rent. They're worried about, I want to go to school. 
school. I had a student last week, Ms. Jones, I want to go to this local school here in Lakeland, but I don't know how I'm going to get the money. It's so expensive. And my words to her were, there are options for you. There are scholarships that are available for you. There are people who are willing to invest on, in you that you're not even aware of. So it is our responsi responsibility to come alongside our youth, our children, and to let them know that their dreams are possible and that our families are not without hope. And that's the caring community that we want to have. And the reason why this program exists is joy in our town is because yes. Sharice Jones, you are here <laughs> and your smile and your, your pos you know, again, it's true. None of us got to where we are without somebody else helping Absolutely. us. Absolutely. And I think that in, in, in the word of God, we are a body. Yes. The, the, the family of God are people that are working together to support, love, yes. and, and encourage. And we need that kind of help along the way in our lives. Yes. Um, we're going to talk now in after our break. We're going to come back and we're going to talk and I want to I want to bait you a little bit. I do not want you to leave when we take a, a break in just a moment. I want you to come back because the, this whole idea of faith works and economics yes. is a is it a budding emerging concept, isn't it? Yes. And it is it is bringing a bit of a transformational mindset to the world uh, educational world around us. Yes. Um, why should we be interested in faith, works, and economics? Because God has called us to be salt and light in the world. He has called us to be salt and light, George. And we have to not contain ourselves within the four walls of our local places of worship, but God wants to send us out. He wants us to send us out in schools, into our businesses, into our restaurants, into any place where he's blessed our hands. Don't say any more because then you're going to give it all away. And we won't have anything to talk about after the break. Okay. You see, no, I, I, again, folk, know that there is hope. Poverty is not a black issue, a white issue, or a Hispanic issue. It is a humanity issue. And just because you may be in poverty doesn't mean that you are worthless. Mm -hmm. God creates value for you. Mm -hmm. He has created you in his image. There is something for you to do. There's a place that God wants you to fill. There is purpose in your life. And that's why TBN exists. That's why Joy in Our Town exists. That's why Sharice has come to talk to us today. Because we want to give you the sense of hope that God has the possibility for your life in a way that you can't even begin to think or imagine. Mm -hmm. So I'm going, to, I'm going to just invite you to stay with us. We're going to take yes. a brief break. We're going to come back. Sharice Jones from Asbury Theological Seminary, she's going to talk to us some more. We're going to talk about how you can go to the next level yes. and see your life become and reach the potential God has for you. You stay with us. There's more of joy in our town right after the break. Morning, Gary. We are GetSchooled.com. You want a college education, don't you? You know you do. That's why we're here. We're free and here to guide you through every step of the way, starting with attendance. <laughs> Gary, financial aid forms. Picking a college, man. You and us go together like tacos and Tuesday. And I love tacos. Go to GetSchool.com. Welcome back to Joy in Our Town. I'm George Cope, and it is my privilege that they give me week after week to sit here at this round table and enjoy the privilege of meeting you, welcoming you into our studio, and thanking TBN for being concerned about you. They want you to know why you can smile for living in Central Florida. It's my privilege to have Sharice Jones from Asbury Theological Seminary with us. And Sharice has been talking to us about the struggles of education within the concept of poverty and that. I, um, but I also understand, Sharice, that there are, there are more issues. There are barriers that people are facing when it comes to education. And I know that there, our viewers are watching, and many of them may say, you know what, I always wanted more education. Uh -huh. uh, am I too old? Uh -huh. uh, or I don't have what it takes or whatever. Talk to us about barriers and why people shouldn't feel that barriers are, are the reason to not move forward. In God's economy, there are no barriers. 
because with God, everything is possible. There's nothing that is impossible with God. So I would say that um, when we speak of barriers, um, you may desire to go back to school. And like you said, you may feel like you're too old. Well, I started seminary in my late 30s. You know, I won't tell my age right now. <laughs> I got you. That's okay. I'm not going to ask. <laughs> but it's ne you, you are never too old to learn. And um, the greatness that God has in you, he wants to bring that out. So there's opportunity. So with the barriers of, of feeling like you're too old or maybe you don't have the financial means um, to um, uh, attain, go to college, there are opportunities for you to get assistance, financial assistance um, with regard to that. But I think it's a, a great mental barrier for people that just want to step into their purpose and to begin that journey. And I would say that people just have to shift their mindset to know who they are and who they are created to be. And let not the barrier stop you from attaining that goal of getting your education, going back to school, starting a business, whatever it is that you want to do. So just focus on um, having that as the end game for you to accomplish that. Most people think that um, business is business and mm -hmm. God is God and mm -hmm. never the two shall meet. Mm -hmm. Why is faith works and economics becoming such a high priority? You gave us a hook mm. before the break. Just a little bit. <laughs> let's let's get into that because that that's that's a deep well for us to look at. Faith works and economics. So we understand faith. Mm -hmm. Work would be business. Mm -hmm. Economics would be profit or the outcome of that business. Mm. Okay, and God in the midst of all. So talk to us about that. Why does Asbury Theological Seminary think that's important enough to have someone like you to focus on that and the training to begin to develop people? Um, I would say because the marketplace, and I define marketplace not just in terms of business, but all of those places where people go to work and serve each day, that that the marketplace itself is still an uncharted frontier for Christians because there is often a disconnect to what my worship is on Sunday to what I'm doing from Monday through Saturday. And so a job becomes a job. It becomes mundane. I'm working just to make a living. I'm working to pay this off or to have this. And the, the connection is not being made. So with faith, work, and economics, what God wants us to realize is when he's gifted you as an artist, when he's gifted you as a business person, as a teacher, or whatever skill set that he's placed inside of you, he wants you to use that gift and use your gifts for his glory and to bless others with that. So it's such a major topic because many people, um, for instance, um, I would have people come to me and say, I feel called to ministry. So I think I'm going to leave my job and I'm going to work in the church full time. And God may call you into that type of position in serving the people of God as a pastor or a teacher. But oftentimes we don't see the importance and the value. And we don't think that God values the day-to-day -day things that we do. Whether it's in manufacturing, being a janitor or a custodian. We don't see that what we're bringing to the table is still blessed and valued by God. So this is very important for the church is because through looking at our work through a different lens, George, looking at our work as being a means of worship, how we give service back, how we use our gifts to bless others. We can begin to see the landscapes change in our, uh, in our workplaces when we bring our faith into the mix. And I'm not talking about quoting Bible scriptures. I'm talking about the very presence of God within you, that light that you bring, the spirit of excellence that you you bring to your job, that dedication, that service and care for concern on how you do that job, your ethics, your character, your integrity, people are watching, even when we think they're not watching George. And so when we bring that light into those dark areas, we can begin to see transformation and real revival happen. Mm. I think that uh, we, what you're saying is we have to <laughs> redefine church. Yes. Okay. And to redefine churches, church is not a building, church are people, yes, right? absolutely. And uh, church is not what we do from 11 to 12 on Sunday. Sometimes church, longer. Or longer, <laughs> that's right. Yeah, that's, that's right, for sure. But it's what we do 
365, mm -hmm. 24-7. It's, exactly. it's God, uh, his life in us because God doesn't stop Mm -hmm. uh, flowing, uh, speaking to us and flowing through us just because we leave the building. Exactly. So what does Asbury now want their students to, to do with this whole idea of faith, work, and economics? They're, they're training them to be specifically mm -hmm. in, engaged in the understanding that the marketplace is their ministry? Mm -hmm. And it can be your ministry, that there are no limitations or boxes that we can put God's work in. So what we're trying to do with students is to widen, as you stated um, before, our lens of ministry to our, expand our definition of what ministry is and what ministry looks like. And so with our students, we're giving them exposure um, through internships of um, walking alongside and being mentored by Christian business leaders so that they can enter into the workplace and see how faith is actually played out in a person's business so that when they come back to their congregations, they have a deeper understanding of what it's like for their members, their uh, parishioners to go to work and serve every day so they can speak into their lives and they can pray for those individuals because as we pray and they go back to work on Monday to bring uh, service to the kingdom of God, that's an awesome thing. So we're inviting our students to actually have those training experiences so they can can impart and, and holistically disciple um, believers. So it basically it's just moving outside the church, taking mm -hmm. what I believe and making sure that every aspect of my life mm -hmm. on, in the job, in, in my community, is reflecting the same values that I have on Sunday morning at 11 o'clock. Exactly, and that includes the home because I don't want anyone to get the idea that if you are a stay-at-home mom or you're a grandparent or you're a father that's in the home, that that is considered work and honorable as well. So we want to include any work as any service that's being rendered. So if we think about that, then let's think about how we're rendering that service and how uh, what it means to God for us to do it in the way that brings Him glory. I, I get the feeling that there are people that are watching that, that you're inspiring them and, they, and, and you, they're saying to themselves, I've got an idea. I, I really, I think I've had this thing in my heart for a long time, but I don't know what to do with it. Um, what would you advise a person that really feels like they have entrepreneurial skill, they have passion, they have desire, but they're trapped? There may be one of those barriers mm -hmm. that's stopping them. What would you encourage them to do to take the next step to fulfill their dreams and aspirations? Go ahead and step out. That's what I, I've been there and done that. <laughs> they, talk, talk about, so what did that look like? When you said, I've been there, done that. Wow. What does that look like getting out of the boat for you? Getting out of the boat, um, having, I had wonderful ideas. I would sit and journal these ideas, these business um, ideas that I would have. But the thing that was stopping me was fear. And there's two types of fear, the fear of failure and then the fear of um, success, which means, and we don't talk a lot about that, but if this thing really takes off, this is, is this going to be more? Can I, can I handle it? So when I finally made up in my mind that if God has given me the idea, if he's given me that, he'll give me the provision. And the provision's just not the financial provision, but all of the people that need to be connected to help support and bring that thing to for flourishing. So fear, um, you have to step out. And that's what I did. Um, when I let kind of let my nonprofit go by the wayside many years ago, God brought it back to my remembrance. And he says, I've got you in public school system working with kids. I have you at Asbury Seminary um, working with students. So now I wanna, want you to merge this into this business idea where you're empowering um, this next generation to move and be ready for careers, to be ready for entrepreneurship. So I would say, please just step out and be obedient because behind that stepping out, once you make that first step as, as Peter did, and found that he could walk off on the water, then everything is possible. So moving past the fear, I think that's the biggest thing. Well, all things are possible to them that believe. Yes. I, I remember that uh, always in scripture, God requires faith to become active yes. at some point. And so there may be those that are watching uh, today and, and you're just, you've got the idea and it's time to step out. How would Asbury Seminary help them? 
we have resources that we provide for stu or for anyone can come into my office and talk to me about an entrepreneurial idea. We have partners with local uh, businesses. Um, the Nehemiah Project is one that does wonderful biblical entrepreneur training. And so we can partner with them in order to bring those resources to those individuals who are seeking to start their own business. For other pastors or ministry leaders that are seeking to get some materials to equip them in holistically discipling their congregation in faith work integration, then we have resources in the form of DVDs, books, and we'll be soon launching a Vimeo channel, which will focus on faith and work, um, bring an um, inspiring message from local people such as yourself, George, on how they can um, be impactful for the kingdom of God in the marketplace. Wow. Well, Sharice, I, again, I can't say it enough. It's people and a smile like you have <laughs> that give reason for us to be joyful in our town. Thank you. And I am grateful for that. You know, as we uh, come to the end of our time together today, friend, I just want you to know that the, the God of heaven and earth is a God that has mm -hmm. tremendous expectations for your life. Don't waste your life. Mm -hmm. You know, people say, well, I, I'm this, I'm that, I can do this, I can do that, I can't do that. Mm -hmm. But in the process, all things are possible to those that believe. And God only asks you to believe. You say, but... Well, if I believe, will he let me down? Listen, God doesn't let people down. God works with people and he takes them on the journey and he brings them to the place where he is working in your life and he will work out of your life exactly what he's created you for. Don't let excuses barrier you from living to divine destiny and purpose in your life. If you today are afraid, if you're lonely, mm -hmm. I just want you to know that we're here because we care about you. Absolutely. And God cares about you today. So in Jesus' name, I speak life. I speak blessing. Yes. I speak hope. Yes. I speak peace. Yes. I speak provision over yes. you. Never forget, God knows your name. He's for you and not against you. He's made you the head and not the tail. He has blessed you and will not curse you. You keep God first, and he will, in all of your ways, prosper your path. Well, we've got to go for today. Thanks again for joining us on Join Our Town. Sharice, thanks for being our Thank guest. Thank you, George. Thank you. We'll see you next week. And so until then, don't you forget it. Jesus loves you. He really does. Bye for now. This program has been sponsored by the Trinity Broadcasting Network, Post Office Box A, Santa Ana, California, 92711.